Much. The trial for Bryce Rhodes is set to start today. He's accused of a 2016 triple murder that involved two teenagers. Despite his history of disruptive behavior in court, the judge ruled Rhodes competent to stay in trial. Jim Stratman joins us live now from downtown with more. And Jim, what should we expect today? Yeah, Connie and Eric, we're expected to start jury selection a little bit later on this morning. The whole the whole goal is to try to get that jury pool whittled down to a point where they can start opening arguments tomorrow morning. And while that is what is going to be happening today, a big point of contention in the buildup to this trial has been what will happen at the end. If Rhodes is convicted, will he be facing a death penalty? Now, that is something that has been decided already. Judge ruling no in that regard. How However, this is going to be a trial with a lot of interest. You'll remember all the way back in 2016, this uh, this whole situation began where Rhodes was accused of murdering 14 year old Larry Ordway and 16 year old Maurice Gordon after they allegedly saw him shoot and kill 40 year old Christopher Jones. Now police records described an absolutely brutal scene when they arrived. Bodies had been stabbed tortured and burned. Now originally there were talks of giving Rhodes the death penalty if he was convicted, but the judge has taken that off the table in the buildup to this trial. She said that there's clear and ample evidence that Rhodes has a serious mental illness and because of that he is not going to be eligible for the death penalty. So We've established the clear mental illness as cited by the judge. That brings up a question of competency. Is he even incompetent to stand trial? Well, a judge found in October that Rhodes had scored between a 90 and a 55 on a series of IQ tests over a series of years. And those scores indicated that he was going to be competent enough to stand trial. You look at functionality, I put it at 51. That means this is 50 and below is you're in trouble. He was hanging on the fringes, I thought. Hang on. Awesome. And, and just to be clear, hanging on the fringes of what? Hanging on the fringes of being able to function in society. Now, the maximum penalty that Rhodes will be facing if he is convicted is going to be life in prison without the possibility of parole. Again, jury selection is slated to start here in just a few hours. The hope, again, is to be able to start oral arguments and opening arguments in this case tomorrow morning. Eric, Connie. All right, Jim, thank you so much. Also happening today, the JCPS board has called a special meeting and could vote on who will fill the vacant seat in District 1. The seat was held by Diane Porter for 13 years before she resigned back in October. Applications for the vacant seat were due earlier this month. The board is expected to meet tonight at 5 o'clock. We'll update you on air and online as we learn more. Metro police are looking for the person responsible for a deadly shooting near Jefferson Town. This happened last night, just after 6 on Stony Ridge Road, which is not far from Hurstbourne Parkway. When police arrived, they found a man who'd been fatally shot. If you have any information here, you're urged to call the anonymous tip line at 574-LMPD. Crews from the Louisville office of the National Weather Service were in Logan County yesterday, surveying damage from those storms that rolled through over the weekend. Their pre preliminary reports confirm an EF2 tornado with wind speeds of 115 miles per hour. That tornado was on the ground for about 18 miles. The National Weather Service also confirmed a second tornado touchdown in southern Bowling Green. Preliminary reports show it as an EF1 with winds up to 90 miles per hour. And the National Weather Service officials say that these two tornadoes were spawned from the same deadly storm system that hit Clarksville, India, Clarksville, excuse me, in northern Tennessee, and we'll have more on the storm's impact, including the thousands of outages still in the area this morning. That's going to happen in the next 10 minutes. And what's eerie about all of this is mm -hmm. that tornado outbreak happened almost two years to the exact right. day from a similar storm system that ripped through western Kentucky. More than 80 people died, and small towns like Mayfield were nearly wiped out. As of now, recovery is still ongoing. WHAS 11's Alex Dieterer shows us how that deadly day change the state of Kentucky forever. This is the most devastating tornado event uh, in Kentucky's history. Multiple tornadoes touched down in Kentucky the night of December 10th, 2021. According to the National Weather Service, the tornado that hit Mayfield traveled more than 160 miles just in Kentucky alone. 
Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear says more than $800 million in federal and state funds have gone to relief efforts in the area. Governor Bashir announced just this week that they've secured even more funding. We've now secured over $123 million in extra federal funding. It's for the 2021 tornadoes and also some 2021 flooding in the east as well. That can be used to address housing needs, public infrastructure, and stormwater management, as well as small business grants. And while the world, and especially Kentuckians, will never forget that deadly night, two years later, a chilling reminder that weather will always be unpredictable. Well, almost two years to the night, we had more deadly tornadoes in southern Kentucky and northern Tennessee that killed people. So it's a reminder that just because it's December, just because you're in the time of the year where you're more likely to see snow than tornadoes, doesn't mean that you can't get tornadoes. That's why we always tell people to have a weather radio, to have that emergency plan ready to go because severe weather can happen at any time of the year. And it's always important to be ready in case of strikes. Alex Dieterer, WHAS 11 on your side. Tonight, we're returning to Mayfield for a closer look at recovery efforts. WHAS 11 Shay McAllister and Chief Photojournalist Philip Merle spoke with Mayfield's mayor and community leaders. They detail what a timeline for recovery looks like two years later. That's tonight at 6. So I talked to Shay mm -hmm. about this story when yeah. she got back from, uh, from down there. And I think you guys are going to be very surprised at some of the things that she found. I won't, I won't uh, dive into it, but it's worth a watch tonight at 6 o'clock because I was very surprised with what she found out okay. having visited down there. Yeah, I'm excited to see her yeah. story.